Hey friends, Darren Bailey uh, coming at you today again with another wonderful, uh, power-packed informational episode. I want to thank you so much for uh, just joining in and supporting this cause of restoring Illinois to get our nation back on track. And and it all happens when you get involved with the government at the local level. That's how we that's how we take back uh, our our government. That's how we uh, ensure a uh, constitutional republic uh, survives. And and uh, through these episodes, um, we're, we're gathering a lot of wonderful experts from across the state and uh, just educating, informing, and empowering you. And today, I'm blessed to have with me Pastor Jim Scudder. Uh, he's actually cousin by marriage. He's from Quentin Road Baptist Church up in the Lake Zurich area, and uh, they do some amazing things worldwide, not just uh, locally. And and uh, recently, about a, a, a few months ago, uh, he hosted uh, Mike Pompeo to come, and Cindy and I were blessed to uh, have, have breakfast with him and have a discussion, and, and I encourage you to read his latest book out, uh, uh, Never Give an Inch. It's an absolutely amazing story uh, uh, during the time when he served as uh, head of the CIA and and uh, Secretary of State. So, But right now, what I'd like to talk about a little bit today is just this mindset of church and state. And uh, Pastor Scudder is uh, is kind of an expert, and they definitely delve full uh, head, head on in uh, their area and just uh, reclaiming, whether it's education, uh, reclaiming uh, the church's role in government. Because, friends, I truly believe that this uh, lie of separation of church and state uh, simply uh, holding this republic hostage. So uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us today and coming down here and and uh, just uh, uh, laying ground to, I guess, your wife's roots of uh, your, your, it's your uh, mother-in-law who's my aunt, my dad's sister. And, and it's just been amazing getting to go to Israel with you at uh, two different times. Uh, your support and your boldness and courage of speaking out uh, during uh, this recent uh, campaign that was run. But uh, Anyway, I would like if just kind of share, just open up and give your uh, thoughts and ideas and expertise to um, you know the, the the church's proper role in a constitutional republic here in the United States of America today. Well, there's a long history of churches being involved in our government here. I mean, it's it was preachers that were uh, involved in even protecting our freedoms in the Revolutionary War. Uh, and I want to get back into that and kind of explain a little bit about how our approach in our church and how I've always looked at um, Christians' in involvement in government and the church's involvement in government. But first of all, let me just tell you that I uh, really appreciate you, uh, your service to our state as a representative, senator. Um, running for governor was a, a huge ask, but we appreciate that you did it. And uh, although you didn't win, you... Uh, you fought hard, and you had you had way too much of something. Uh, you had way too much common sense for Illinois. So I don't know. It's just like I, I don't understand how people didn't vote you in. But either way, uh, we also we also know God's in control, and that's that's kind of the nice thing at the end of the day when you know God is. You do everything you know to do, and then just trust Him and allow Him to. To do the outcome, but but you worked hard. I mean, you were you were everywhere. I was worried about you I'm, every time I saw you, Darren. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm feel good. It's like this is God's. You know, it was our mission field. It was truly. incredible. Yeah. So uh, congratulations on a, a really really hard fought ca campaign, and and uh, us as a family, we were really, really proud because hey, this is Darren. People we've known you for a long time. Gone to Israel with you and. Um, it's 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 neat to be and the Isaac Bacchus Award uh, oh, yeah. rest over you. I'm still a, 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 I display that proudly. So well, during even, my even thank Isaac, you. Isaac Bacchus is an example of someone that fought for religious freedom, and uh, that was uh, your recipient of that award from our Bible College, Day Spring Bible College and Seminary. Um, and we're here in this beautiful little town of Louisville. Uh, because uh, not many built, people from the Chicago area or up uh, north say that correctly. So you well, nailed we it, said so. it correctly because my <laughs> wife uh, made sure I knew what the towns. Well, actually, my mother-in-law uh, knew what the she grew up here. So uh, now I love the, I love the town. Uh, I love the you know the, the community, the farm. Uh, we were able to film with you today for our TV show, which is on TBN every Wednesday night. 
And get a pitch in on that. What's tell us? It's it's called In Grace, and it's you can search for it on YouTube. Uh, but it's on TVN every Wednesday night, and we do lots of different um, uh, adventures, kind of like travel adventure programming. We do a lot of filming in Israel. We were just in Saudi Arabia looking for the real Mount Sinai. Uh, we do a lot on just uh, the beauty uh, in our country, uh, creation stuff. Um, and, and what we're doing here is we're filming a Thanksgiving special. I know it's just uh, May, but. Uh, is it May? Where's April? April. Uh, yeah. So still May April. when some people hear right. this, it's all right. <laughs> so I didn't know if Southern Illinois had switched over to May yet. <laughs> so, so you know, we, we said let's do a let's do a Thanksgiving special about um, sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting. It's very biblical. I interviewed you uh, by your Alice Chamber Chomper Chalmers Chalmers tractor, uh, awesome old tractor that your dad uh, first bought and stuff. So. Uh, interviewed some of the other uh, family members here that are farmers and just watching them plant. You guys are out, out there planting right now and, you know, talking about the biblical aspect of that. So that'll be coming up in in the fall, uh, an In Grace episode on thankfulness. Uh, so thank you for uh, taking the time today to, uh, to uh, let me drive your big John Deere uh, what was that tractor that I drove? What was the eighty three forty five R? That's what I thought. I, I knew it when I was looking at it on the. <laughs> Uh, anyways, a lot of fun. So uh, back to church and state. When the founding fathers gave us this incredible gift, this republic founded upon scripture, upon a, a faith in God and, and his word, um, they they didn't want there to be an official religion. And obviously that would have been bad because that's that's what England had. And, and if you have an official religion, then you can use that, and it, then you don't have freedom. You don't have religious freedom. And so they decided to make sure that there was a clause in our Constitution that said that the, the state could not uh, have an official uh, religion, and that's what it is. Now, that's been changed into separation of church and state, but it's, it's really not—that's nowhere in, in the writings. You know, um, The church should have influence in government— Government can have, I mean, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, which you are, and I am, and if you're in government, if you win an office, and, and then all of a sudden you can't, you, you know, you can't, you have to, to leave your faith at the door, well, that's not really authentic faith, then, is it? So the idea wasn't to keep God out of government and out of schools, prayer out of schools. That's ridiculous. We'll see what's happened when when we've done that. So Separation of church and state is always screamed, but it's not really part of what they were intending to do. They were just making sure there wasn't an official state religion, which we would agree is not what we would have wanted because Church of England and you know all of those things that were— And a simple study of the Danbury Papers, exactly. the, the, the letters that yep. Thomas Jefferson was sending, a simple study of that. Right, and that's you where— the, read, And that's our problem. We read the headlines, so <laughs> the, someone wants to come out and cry separation. Oh, it says yep. that in our Constitution, yep. right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't, yep. And so you you got it. That was exactly the the place where they were uh, discussing all of that. And you know it's it's a, it's a little bit of a fine line. But at the end of the day, uh, if our founding fathers primarily were men of faith and had a good strong uh, foundation of you know w- we believe the Bible is true and we believe that the law is a law from God and freedom is a I mean you read our our documents. You know, uh, we did a show, Can You Find God in Washington, D.C.? Well, you know, probably not in the White House today, but you can. We were looking for God in the, in the monuments, in the buildings, and, and it, he was everywhere. It's cornerstones. It's there in it's Scripture. It's there. It's in stone. It's on the Supreme Court. You know, it's like, so these were not all, you know, I'm not saying they were all like, uh, they all believe the Bible 100%, but most of them did. They were all people of faith. Uh, believed in prayer. All of our early uh, colleges were Bible colleges. You know, all of these colleges were uh, established Princeton uh, to Harvard to uh, train ministers, you know. And and then the, the preacher's role was often to inspire the members to be patriotic, to f- fight for liberty, you know. And I think without the preachers, we probably wouldn't have uh, fought or fought successfully the War of Independence either. So, you know, to say that a, a Christian shouldn't be involved in government is is not correct. Why? Well, because we have a 
we have a country where we can select our leaders. And why wouldn't the church, why wouldn't Christians, especially Christians, say, let's let's make sure we are involved. Let's sure we are, let's make sure we are voting. Let's find people, let's find the Darren Baileys out there that are going to take stands and and have common sense too. That's another nice thing uh, is that you not only you understand, you know, God's laws and God-given freedom and all of those issues, but you have common sense too as a I think as a farmer, I think you you guys just get it cuz it you, is mandatory. You kind of have to, right? Long. Yeah, you're going to you're going to farm for like a year if you don't have common sense and you'll be probably dead or bankrupt. So, uh anyways, um no, we need to be involved. And if we're not, you know what's going to happen is what's happening right now. So talk about the church's row. What what, you know, like I said, I thought it was awesome and you do this, you have community leaders, political leaders uh stop by and 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 the deal with Mike Pompeo, I thought was just a genius. And so what is the church's row because I you know, I will attest uh, for years I felt this calling and especially had Cindy at my back saying, Darren, I think this is the, you know, the next step where, you know, I was, I was asked to fill a vacancy in a school board and I said, no, because I'm a farmer, I'm working too hard. And, and Cindy came along and said, Darren, I think this is where God wants you. And we, she, you know, we had the opportunity to, uh, even in church leadership, when I was asked to be in leadership, no, I'm too busy. I have my wife to say, Darren, I think this is where God wants you and running for state rep, running for Senate, running for governor. You know, my initial answer was no. And then just praise God, I had a wife that was there behind me to help push me uh, through that door. But my library at home, I still have them. I need to get rid of them, but it's filled with books of, you know, can or should a Christian be involved in politics? Because government has turned into a dirty business. Politics in and of itself is is gotten dirty. So, you know, the ultimate uh, mindset of, oh, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to get stained by that. But it was one day that I realized Gosh, that's what's missing. So what is the church is the church? I go to church, whatever church it is. What is the church is should I should I go to church and just never hear anything about, you know, our local units of government, local support? What what is the church's actual involvement? And is there a separation between a church's involvement and my my involvement as a as an individual? Yeah. So how I've always approached this and it's how we operate at our church up in we're in Lake Zurich, so we're um northwest of Chicago a suburb, uh, we, we number one, encourage our attenders and anyone that listens, you know, now we have a bigger voice because uh, you can stream and broadcast and stuff. So we encourage every person that hears us to vote. You know, I, I think... And you keep that, you talk about All the it. time. Yes. All the time, especially as we come up to maybe a couple months before primary or an election, because uh, we have people in our church that are registrars. They can register people to vote. We have them in the lobby. It's not partisan. Right. You know, just register right. to vote. Uh, they, they know the paperwork. They're, you know, they're obviously allowed to do that. And so we we stress that. Uh, we put it in the bulletin. We announce it. I get up and say, listen, if you live in a country where you get to select the leader and you don't, if you don't vote, you will have to answer to God. I, I truly believe that. I think we're going to be standing before God and if we're not involved, we're not, you know, at least you say, well, there's no good ones to vote for. Okay, then at least decide which is the the best of the two of the worst, maybe. Um, we still have to be involved, okay? So that's number one. Encourage people to vote, uh, and I stress it, and I talk about it a lot. Number two, I, I want to try to bring in people that are, first of all, the, like the, the big one for me as a pastor is, are they pro-life? You know, and I think once, once, I, once they're pro-life— Almost everything else is is very conservative, and and they fit very nicely into I think a biblical worldview. So, um, Darren Bailey, uh, running for governor, is invited, uh, and and we'll invite other people. Usually, they don't come if they don't you know um, line up with with our values. But uh, those that ha- have those positions, I say, hey, would you? Uh, would you get up and tell us a little about yourself? You know, and so you're bringing in candidates, not just not just your statewide offices or your if you have a, a, a congressional race, but also bring in your your library board, people running for library board, uh, your your state rep, state senator. So we do that frequently, and we invite them in. Our mayor, you know, come in and and share a little bit about you know who you are and and what you do. So 
get get people to vote, get people to come in and introduce them and make sure everyone knows who they are. And then number three, I encourage our people to pray about consider running like you're like you did and your wife was, you know, um, I won't say pressuring you, but uh, encouraging you. And, and I think it's good that she did. Um, so I want to I want to try to do that more is to just really encourage our people to consider it themselves and, and start in the granular level because that's really where our, our a lot of our problems are happening. You know, the libraries are where they're doing these these drag shows. And, you know, it's just unbelievable to in, in my mind that this is happening. But get people in these offices that understand um, you know, what the Bible says about life and all of that. So those are some things that we've done. And we we just make it a priority all the time, but especially more around elections, uh, to encourage people to do it. Now, some people say, "Well, you'll lose your tax exempt status." Well, here's one thing: we we first of all, is that the worst thing in the world? You know, certainly, I want to save on sales tax as a church. We shouldn't have to, whatever. But is that the end of the world? No, God will take care of us. It'll be fine. But we we don't technically endorse but here's what i do i get up and say i'm the, you know i'm the pastor but i'm a private citizen and as a private citizen um i'm going to be voting for Darren Bailey you know yeah you did that that was awesome nothing so wrong that, with that yeah, and okay. that's there you go i love that mine. and you know then you're still saying hey this is this is a great person but it's not the organization endorsing and again um all of our african american friends uh, in the uh, all over the state uh, they do that with immunity all the time for, for Republicans, but mostly Democrats. So uh, again, I think that's a bigger fear than really it, it needs to be is this tax exempt uh, thing. Yeah. And there is an argument that that's actually protected in the constitution that a church cannot, should not be taxed anyway. But anyway, that's a, that's another day. There's plenty of strategies to go around this if we'll just utilize them. And you would be amazed at how many churches we've reached out to talk to pastors. And they just say, yeah, we're not going to talk about any of that at our church. And I truly believe that this day and age, that's, I, I believe that's the spearhead of what is wrong with number one, the state of Illinois and what's wrong with our country. I think God gave us a free land here with expectations of what could be accomplished for the entire world. And now in this day and age, what better way to stifle that than than lull the church to sleep so that the church doesn't, you know, fulfill its original intended purpose. Yeah, and it's still it's it's, it's feeling to me more and more hopeless, but I cannot let that thought pervade because uh, prevail in my mind because it's never hopeless. You know, if, if God is on our side, and you know, it, it can happen. So we got to keep doing what's right and and look at our country and say, listen, um, America is not the answer to to everything in the world. It's Jesus, but we have a country that has recognized God-given freedom for all individuals, and it's a, a freedom that doesn't come from the government. It comes from God, you know, and the laws come from God. Our king, we don't have a king, you know, and, and so all of these things, it's, it's a precious thing that we have here. It's a unique thing. Uh, we've been able to travel the world as we've do, done these uh, programs for TV, and I am so thankful to get back to the United States because not just because it's home, because it's a it's a remarkable place to live. Uh, God has blessed has blessed us. I think because of our foundation on Him, on His Word. I think it's also because we've by and large supported Israel, generally speaking. Um, but I think you know the the way we've allowed um, these these innocent babies, unborn babies, uh, to be slaughtered. You know, and and now just just all of the things that are passing, um, where like things we couldn't even imagine ten or fifteen years ago are happening. We had better stop the slide. We have a chance now to stop the slide. So how do you do it? Good people got to run, and we've got to we've got to get out there and vote. We got to be active, and I think the church plays an important role in that. You know, not to say the church is the answer for you know winning elections, but the church had better be active. Why why do some churches it's not just the tax exempt status. Why do some churches not uh, get involved? Because they don't want to make waves within their membership, you know. And and I say, listen, if we're gonna if we're gonna save lives, if we're gonna save our country, we're gonna have to make some waves. So that that's where I think we just need need to be a little more bold as ministers to to say, no, this is this is how we're gonna do it. We've got to stand up. We got to do something, or uh, it's over. 
Yeah, no, I love that. And, uh, you know, to that point, the men and women who have served in our armed forces from day one who, who you know, and that's what I tell people, whether you whether you served on the front lines or whether you were in the back uh, state side behind the desk, it really doesn't matter because you signed to serve uh, regardless and, and you were available to that call wherever you were needed. So I just, I thank these men and women. I think it's so important that we keep our veterans at the forefront yeah. and understanding, you know, their sacrifice, the time that they were gone away from family, uh, the, just the fact that they put their you know, signature on the dotted line that, hey, uh, I'll fill in the gap if needed. And um, I, I think, you know, we honor them by, you know, they protected our freedoms. Yeah. They signed, and now we uphold our freedoms by showing up to vote. Exactly. So if we don't, we're dishonoring that sacrifice that they made. One last thing, you mentioned uh, veterans and people that serve. Uh, we make it a big deal in our church to honor veterans, to uh, do big things on Memorial Day, to remember the sacrifice. Uh, we we uh, honor first responders, policemen. You know, we're very patriotic. We sing the national anthem. You know, so those things also, a lot of churches don't want to do that anymore, but we're like, no, we're going to do it. And here's what the community is doing. They're coming in and saying, wow. This is this is what we should be doing. We should be honoring our first responders and our police and our veterans and and our flag. You know, so some people are scared to do it for some reason. We're doing it, and it's our church is is growing like crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you for that. And and uh, I played the trumpet in high school. So uh, when when it works out, I play taps at uh, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, sometimes a funeral. So. Uh, uh, if you're out there listening and I'm ever available, I'd love to uh, be able Something to do that if that works out. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. You're invited. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, um, I always love giving a shout out to good organizations. And, and one organization that I love is IllinoisFamily.org, Illinois Family Institute. They've been behind me from day one, and, and they really are at the forefront for uh, So go to their website, IllinoisFamily.org, get on their mailing list because during when session is 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 in mainly in Illinois, uh, they they put out these weekly, sometimes daily alerts, letting people know, alerting them of of the bills and 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 a description of what's going on and who to call and how to fill out witness slips. So they've been on the forefront of this at election time. They will put out uh, pamphlets. Again, they're they're you know they're they're nonpartisan. They're simply. Here's this people person, and here's what he believes, and here's these key issues. And it's something that can be placed in any church because it's nonpartisan. It's simply the facts. And, do that too. Okay, good. And then, and then another thing, and I carry these with me is a uh, you know know your parties, and it's got to you know both party platforms, mm-hmm. and it just simply gives uh, highlights some issues that people really probably have forgotten or don't know. Uh, you know, things have changed over the last forty years, even within both both party platforms. So uh, I think that uh, you know an informed Christian. Uh, can 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 certainly has a opportunity and a duty uh, to make a difference today. When I ran for state representative in 2017, uh, after our family sat and, and prayed and fasted and came together a week later, and and because I wanted, you know, I needed, I had to have family buy-in, not just with my sons coming to the farm, but with their wives to make sure that they were, because you know, it's a, there's a lot of hours involved. So. Uh, by the grace of God, they were all they were all in. The first thing that I did in the 109th district in the, the fall of 2017 was I drafted a letter and sent to every church that I could locate in the 109th. I think then there were like 186 churches. You know, we're a very rural area, and and it was amazing because I I, I heard feedback from many of those churches. We were invited. Uh, still have dear friendships uh, from those early days of uh, pastors and and prayer groups that wanted to pray over us and pray with us. So uh, so that's you know the church has been at the root of this movement uh, ever since we started. So and I, I I too believe that the church has an amazing responsibility uh, during these past uh, uh, six years of being involved in in government. I've seen uh, I've seen you know churches you know totally uh, shy away from that responsibility and. And in a loving manner, I try to encourage everyone, hey, we got a responsibility here, and it really doesn't take much. So I hope that at the end of the day, uh, this episode helps encourage uh, some uh, some people out there to realize that, hey, we can talk about this in a, in a non-threatening way, and uh, at least this duty of voting, duty of voting, Amen. that's what it uh, that's what it all boils down to. So um, 
thank you so much for taking your time uh, for for being here today and 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 sharing your passion. I appreciate that, and Thanks, thank you Sarah. so much for what you and your family uh, have, have have accomplished at, uh, at at your church and with your at the uh, day day. Uh, they spring Bible College and you're, you have a college and you yeah. have a seminary, yeah. but then you have you didn't uh, you guys have the very first preschool in well, the state it, of Illinois? It's it's it, I don't know it, maybe one of the earlier Christian preschools, but it's it's we think the largest. We don't know you know how what other other ones are, but it's it's huge. It's massive. So our uh, our daycare preschool is is fantastic. Well, well, I commend you for that. And that's another thing I like to encourage the churches to do. We have these wonderful buildings. Let's think about using them for more than just a, you know, Sunday and Wednesdays. That's and, it. and they can be utilized, especially in this day and age. So yep. thank you. Friends, God bless you. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in. Uh, you can always uh, look forward to more uh, ideas of podcast, and you can go to my uh, Facebook page, Darren Bailey, and and uh, send us a send us a message, Darren at Bailey for Illinois.com. Send me a message if you've got some ideas of guests that we can have on, or some topics that you'd like to learn more about. And and as usual, when you see us out and about, always come over and say hi. We love the we just love uh, hearing your story and uh, just hearing the feedback of uh, the ideas. All of this that's what government does. Government represents. The government shouldn't be going to Springfield or Washington or your local school board or your or your county or your community and passing more laws. We need less government. And in order to have that, we have to have your input. So God bless you. Thanks a lot. And I'll be seeing you soon.